100,000, and as many as a staggering 1 million people may be infected. Dead Rising 2 K0 is a prequel for Dead Rising 2 and was released effectively as a paid demo and hype builder pre-release to Dead Rising 2. K0 is a standalone Xbox Live Arcade title and is not DLC for Dead Rising 2. You can purchase and play K0 without having ever touched Dead Rising 2. K0 is extremely typical of the series. You mostly just run around, completing the task you're assigned and mow down zombies with various standard or combo weapons at your discretion. Case Zero's scenario is one of the more interesting ones in the Dead Rising series. After arriving in Still Creek to fuel up on some gas, Chuck's truck is stolen. Instead of having cases to complete at set times, you're given a much more open-ended 12 hours to explore and gather bike parts to escape Still Creek. You'll also need to get Katie's Zombrex, a new experimental drug that prevents zombification for 12 hours. Case Zero functions as a very good introduction to the major mechanics of Dead Rising 2, just in a much more condensed and limited fashion. You'll be introduced to finding and managing Zombrex for Katie and other survivors, and a very brief introduction to making and using combo weapons, with only 9 being available. The combo weapon selection is fairly weak, but does feature the Spike Bat, one of the best in the main game, as well as the Paddle Saw, which is Chuck's signature weapon. The remaining combo weapons offer a little bit of variety, but aren't overly useful or interesting to use, and aren't unique to Case Zero. Then miscellaneous things like gathering money and buying items from the pawn shop, or fulfilling survivor-specific requests or conditions to rescue them. Unsurprisingly, there will be a lot of overlap with content between Case Zero and Dead Rising 2. There's a lot of asset reuse. There are a handful of unique zombies, but many are simply recolors or reused in the main game. Obviously, that applies to sound as well. The standard sound effects and music do get some carryover in the same manner as the main game. It's not much of an issue, and doesn't detract from the overall experience though. Despite a lot of asset reuse, Still Creek actually feels very distinct and unique. It has a very rural small town desert feel, but does have a lot of charm and character. Everything's kind of run down and dirty, which is a huge difference from the really clean and new feeling of Fortune City. Still Creek may be one of the most unique settings for any Dead Rising game. Still Creek is a nice little area to romp around in. It's a town in the middle of the highway with a tiny population, but does have a few fun staples for you to run around and explore in. It's quick to figure out your way around, since the majority of the events happen along the highway, and the main play area is significantly smaller than even some of the individual areas of the original Dead Rising 1 or 2. You also spend the majority of the time outside, which really highlights the day-night cycle, and gives you a sense of how much time you have left without having to look at your watch. Since most of the other Dead Rising games happen indoors, this is kind of a unique feature. Case Zero is just over an hour long in terms of strictly gameplay with some extra time dedicated to cutscenes and unfortunately loading screens. The loading screens are pretty long, but they don't happen overly frequently. It just sucks to have to zone into the safe house, wait through a load to drop off the bike part, and then leave immediately to get another loading screen. The events are actually paced quite well, likely because Case Zero is so short. You'll rarely feel like you're waiting around for time to pass. You'll complete the introduction cases and immediately have enough events to complete in that 12 hour window where you're constantly doing something. Unique to K0 is the lack of a radio to notify you of the survivors that come in. Instead, Bob Blackrock will flag you down when certain survivors become available to rescue in Still Creek. Then you can climb up and talk to him for more info. It may be a little bit more tedious, but somehow actually feels less annoying than getting constant radio calls. There are 5 groups of survivors and in conjunction with the 5 bike parts, you've got 10 things to do and they all fit nicely together in the timeline. By the time you finish 1 or 2 events, the next one is popping up so it has a nice flow and pace. Your first blind playthrough you will likely end up failing to complete everything just because there's quite a bit to do and some of the bike parts are reasonably well hidden. There are multiple endings in standard Dead Rising fashion, but obviously there is a defined canon ending which leads directly into Dead Rising 2. Of course, once you know the timeline of events, you can complete everything in a single playthrough. That turns this into a kind of one and done game because it really is just a prequel to Dead Rising 2, making the only reason to replay it just for the sake of it. Despite being a standalone Xbox Live Arcade game, you have the ability to carry over Case Zero's unique costumes and Chuck's PP gains into Dead Rising 2, provided you're playing it on an Xbox 360. This is a nice feature, that you won't be able to use if you're planning on playing Dead Rising 2 on a different platform. The maximum level of 5 is a decent head start, but hardly a game-breaking advantage. Case Zero's unique costumes aren't really anything overly special or over the top to make or break it in my opinion. I do like Jacketless Chuck though, which is kind of unfortunate that you can't bring that costume into Dead Rising 2 without external mods.
At recommended playing, games either are ascended to the pantheon of games worthy of your time with a recommendation, or are forced to wallow in the miserable muck of mediocrity with a dismissal. Dead Rising 2 Case Zero is a special case in terms of a recommendation. If you've played the original Dead Rising, or even Dead Rising 2, this is more of the same. Whether it's worth the price of admission is going to totally depend on... you. I personally enjoyed Case Zero quite a bit. It was just a quick and easy little scenario of Dead Rising 2, and works as a nice bridge to ease you into the main game. I never felt bored, and always felt like I had something to do. After a couple of playthroughs, I was able to reliably do everything achievement worthy in a single playthrough, which was extremely satisfying to pull off. Then once you're done, you can safely move on to the main game. In terms of actual story relevance, Case Zero is meaningless to the overall narrative. You just get some very slight insight into the events immediately following the Las Vegas zombie outbreak. You don't get to see some of the juicier details pre-Case Zero, which is reserved for external media like comics. This is actually really unfortunate because it does make Case Zero feel rather unimportant in the timeline. If you want the absolute complete Dead Rising experience, Case Zero is worth playing and a safe recommendation provided you have access to an Xbox 360 or one. If you're lukewarm on Dead Rising or not overly interested in throwing down the cash for a one hour, one and done prequel to Dead Rising 2 or you don't have an Xbox, then it's safe to skip without any real detriment. Just head straight into Dead Rising 2 on your platform of choice. Dead Rising 2 Case Zero gets recommended playing's most prestigious verdict of... Recommended.